work is performed by respiratory muscles to cause expansion of the chest wall only then pressure gradient is created so that air can move from outside to inside the lungs because the pressure gradient is required for movement of air now this uh, respiratory muscles work that means uh, there is consumption of energy consumption of atp that is basically required to cause expansion of the thoracic cage and thoracic cage structures that is the lung and the chest wall they are elastic structures so for expansion of this thoracic cage we need the movement of these elastic structures right so there is some elastic work done so this is known as elastic work okay or it is also known as compliance work for the movement of the elastic structures apart from that there are inelastic structures for that also work is required and that is known as overcoming viscous resistance because the structures are moving right so apart from lung and thoracic cage also structures are moving so that is overcoming viscous resistance and this is known as tissue resistance work tissue resistance work okay then because the air is moving from outside to inside there is some loss of pressure gradient in the passage because of airway resistance if the airway resistance is more right suppose there is narrow passage then there will loss of a more pressure gradient so there is some work done to overcome airway resistance that means suppose airway resistance is more they need to generate more pressure gradient isn't it so that we call as work done to overcome airway resistance okay now there is certain percentage of work entire work of breathing there is certain percentage of each of these work elastic work or compliance work is approximately 65% of the total work right then tissue resistance work is approximately 7% of the total work and airway resistance work is approximately 28% of the total work now how to calculate this work of breathing this is simple formula by which we can calculate you see that work done normally how we calculate is equal to force into distance right now we know pressure is equal to force upon area right so force is equal to pressure into area we will replace this force with the pressure into area in this equation of force into distance so what we get is work is equal to pressure into area into distance and then this area into distance is what it is equal to volume so simply pressure into volume will give us the work done and in the respiratory system this pressure into volume we draw up graph pressure volume relationship in the lungs or in the respiratory system and that graph is the compliance graph which we already know you can check out my video on lung compliance uh, which i have already made anyway so let us go to see that graph and how we can see what are the components of the work done so here this graph is showing the pressure volume relationship so here x axis is showing pleural pressure in centimeters of water and volume change in the lungs is shown in y axis right so maybe from 0 to 500 ml so we are talking about tidal volume here so we will focus here on the main concept of uh, work done and we are not talking about exact pressure volume relationship for that we'll check out the compliance video so you see here this line is showing the inspiration line where the pleural pressure is decreasing and the volume of the lungs is increasing and this particular line is showing the expiration line now what is the work done during inspiration so for that we have to determine the area under this pressure volume graph so what we do we just draw one line from here to the y axis and uh, this is the inspiration so the total work done will be calculated by determining this whole area so this is the total work done during inspiration now there are various components on this right first is the elastic work or the compliance work so you see this line here this line is the central line elastic work is beyond this central line to the other side so 
if we see from here till here whole is the elastic work okay elastic tissues follow a linear relationship so if there is no viscous resistance then actually this will be the relationship which is being followed right so this is the elastic work on the other side the remaining work it is having two components that is the viscous resistance and the airway resistance so some part of it so this much part is the viscous resistance part which contributes 7% and the remaining part is the airway resistance part okay so work done to overcome airway resistance so three components elastic work is this side this is the tissue resistance work and this is the airway resistance work this is the work done during inspiration coming to the work done during expiration same graph but now we will look at the expiration limb so here this is the expiration limb and uh, what we will do that for inspiration we saw this side of area for expiration we will see the other side of the area so this much is the work done for expiration but you see during inspiration the respiratory muscles had expanded the work was done for that but they are holding there they will recoil also so that recoil energy it is utilized for doing this expiratory work actually this is only the viscous resistance work which is being done in expiration and uh, this much i said is the total uh, elastic work this much is the total elastic work and this is the energy which is stored in the respiratory muscles so they will recoil out of that this much portion which is enclosed by the expiration graph that will be utilized for expiration rest of the energy that will be dissipated as heat understanding so this is how we calculate the work done during expiration point to note here that work done during expiration is mainly the work done to overcome the viscous resistance and airway resistance for elastic work it is already stored right and that too that viscous resistance and uh, airway resistance the energy it is utilized by that is stored energy of the elastic work fine moving on to what will happen if there is change in the respiratory rate or there is change in the depth of the breathing what will happen to the work of breathing so here this graph is showing what will happen if the tidal volume increases that means i ask you to take deep breaths okay deep breaths you are taking so you see what happens that uh, there is increase in the volume okay and there is somewhat increase in the pressure also because it will be something like this not like here because for the movement of more air we need more pressure gradient okay and till here it will be the uh, work of breathing and you see only the elastic work only this component is increasing isn't it elastic work is increasing for viscous resistance and uh, airway resistance it is not increasing much only the compliance work is increasing so that happens if tidal volume increases what will happen if breathing rate increases the person is breathing fast in that case the graph will look little bit different so this is the graph uh, which is seen if breathing rate increases so what we are seeing you see tidal volume is same but breathing rate increases the viscous resistance as well as the airway resistance because the air flow velocity the speed with which the air is flowing is increasing so whenever that happens then viscous resistance and air flow resistance increases so that is why you see that it is an expanded graph okay so that portion of the work of breathing is increasing fine so that was about how work of breathing increases if we increase the tidal volume or if we increase the breathing rate coming to the diseases now what happens in obstructive lung diseases and restrictive lung diseases so what is restrictive lung disease restrictive lung disease is a problem in which it becomes difficult to expand the lungs or the chest wall so that means for the same expansion the muscles need to contract more to pull that uh, lungs and the chest wall so more work is being done for creating the same pressure gradient so let us see how the graph will look
So this is the graph of restrictive lung diseases. What we see here, you see, for the same change in volume, now the pressure volume relationship is different. You see this line, central line that has moved to, towards the right side before it was here. So that is what? That is shift in the compliance graph. And now this much becomes the elastic work or the compliance work. So this is restrictive lung diseases. But these patients, even though the work of uh, breathing increases, they will compromise by changing their breathing pattern. What they will do? They will take shallow breaths. They will take fast, shallow breaths. Okay? Fast, shallow breaths. So that this component, the elastic work will decrease. So this line, it will not be 500 ml. It will come somewhere here. Okay? So maybe they will inspire only... 400 ml it will come somewhere here so graph will be like this so they are decreasing the work of breathing however because the breathing rate is increasing so this component will increase right yes so they are shifting the work from elastic work to the viscous and airway resistance work but the compromise is most suited for them it is the most economical way of breathing for the patients of restrictive lung diseases so patients of restrictive lung diseases take fast shallow breaths they don't know this concept of uh, work of breathing however subconsciously their breathing rate changes now coming to obstructive lung diseases how their work of breathing graph will look like so their work of breathing graph will look something like similar to what we uh, saw in a breathing rate increases however in obstructive lung diseases main problem is in expiration okay so this part expiration part is the more which is affected so maybe inspiration it will be like this only okay and the expiration part it will increase like this right so more uh, work done during expiration but yes, as the obstruction increases, inspiration will also be affected. So what is the most suitable pattern of breathing for patients of obstructive lung diseases? What they do is they take slow, deep breaths. Slow, deep breaths, right? So they decrease that component of airway resistance and the viscous resistance. On the other hand, they increase the tidal volume and they work on that because the pressure volume relationship of compliance, that is same. And that becomes the most economical way of breathing for patients of obstructive lung diseases. I hope you understood this very difficult concept of work of breathing and its clinical significance. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it too, press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.